Super resolution, it's a technique to get more detail out of your camera, like adding more megapixels to your camera. And I've spent a couple of weeks now working on it and it actually does work. So I'm gonna cover the process, what you need to do and uh, what kind of results you can actually expect. I'm also gonna show you, I'm, I'm gonna give you some free Photoshop actions that'll make the whole process happen much faster and talk about some caveats, some things that can go wrong. First, I wanna to point to the prior work that was done by Ian Norman. He posted a Petapixel article in 2015 that covered some of these techniques. So go check out his work, uh, just credit where credit is due. I built upon his work. I tried some different techniques. I refined some things. So I think uh, the results that uh, you'll be able to produce with my actions can show a few improvements over the couple of years time that we've uh, been using these techniques. First, in summary, you can get more megapixels. You don't have to worry about understanding all of this right now. Even if you just watch this, just think about this. If you're out taking pictures and you have one of those aha moments where there's a beautiful scene and you wanna get the most out of that scene possible because maybe in the future you wanna put it in your portfolio or make a massive print or something, just put your camera on continuous and take like four or more pictures. If you take 20 pictures, that's not too many. Just take a bunch of pictures of that scene and then go about your day. You can at any point go back and process these pictures later using the techniques that I'm showing you. If in the past there was a scene that you took a bunch of pictures of, then you can apply these technique techniques right now and see if they don't produce a better final image. Super resolution has some benefits. It pretty much eliminates moiré, which is the weird red and green fringing you might get in some areas. It reduces noise dramatically, and it can actually add quite a bit of detail to a scene, but it has some costs. It will take you some time at the computer. Honestly, it, it probably only takes me about one minute per set now that I have these Photoshop actions in place. Uh, and of course, you also have to have Photoshop. Head to sdp.io slash Adobe deal and you can get a free 30-day trial for Photoshop. Uh, first, I'm going to show you an example of image averaging. Image averaging is basically a subset of super resolution. So you can kind of see the, the effects. On the left, we have my image average picture, a handheld picture taken at ISO 3200. And on the right, we have just one of the original images. So you can see right away, image averaging can dramatically reduce the noise and improve the detail and just overall produce a much better, much more printable image. The image on the left is something I've been able to print and sell a lot of because of these stacking techniques. The image on the right obviously was really subpar. However, base image averaging, which I've taught before, uh, can introduce a, a little bit of reduction in detail because the images might move around between frames and they might not line up perfectly on a pixel by pixel basis. So once they're aligned, you might actually blur a little bit. On the left, we have an averaged image and you can see a little bit of blur around it. On the right, we have one original image. You can see the average image removes all noise, removes all the moiré, but also removes a little bit of detail. Super resolution will fix that and actually add a little bit more detail. I will say super resolution isn't the best way to get more detail. Creating a panorama is a much, much better way that can produce almost unlimited detail in a scene. So check out uh, sdp.io slash average for my approach to creating panoramas and using, using imaging averaging. Um, if you have a camera that has pixel shift or sensor shift technologies like Sony, Olympus, Pentax, Panasonic, some models all have them, check out sdp.io slash pixel shift where I'll show you kind of how to use it. Uh, that also produces better images than uh, super resolution can. But if you don't have pixel shift, super resolution can definitely help. Once you've taken a bunch of pictures, the general process for using super resolution is this. First, you open them all as layers. If you use a Lightroom Photoshop workflow like I do, before you process the photos in Photoshop, it's important to look at every image and make sure that they're all equally sharp. If one image is sharper than the others, delete any unsharp images. This might happen because your hand shook a little bit or the camera went out of focus or something else. Just delete all those unsharp images. You only want to start with the sharpest possible images. Once you narrow it down to just your sharp images, select them all and do general adjustments for your exposure. Make sure that the image is well exposed because 
If you're starting with raw files, once you go through the processing, uh, you're not going to be dealing with a raw file anymore. So bring up the shadows if you need to bring up the shadows, bring down the highlights if you need to do that. And then once you have your histogram looking good, all the shadows and highlights recovered and the exposure adjusted, right click them, select edit in, and then select open as layers in Photoshop. This will open up Photoshop and show you them all in a layer. Click the menu box in the upper left corner, select load actions, and then you're gonna type in this URL http colon slash slash sdp.io slash super res and click load that will download it from my server put the actions here on your computer and you can see it's loaded in five separate actions i have average layers here which just averages as i showed you before that will reduce noise uh, there's a median layers here which we don't need to use right now and then you have three super res techniques super res 200 percent scales at 200 percent um, as you increase the percentages here from 200 to 400 to 800 percent you're going to increase the detail that you get out of the final image but you're also going to dramatically increase the amount of computing power required to do it so 200 percent will go fairly quickly 800 percent will give you better results but instead of taking you know five minutes it might take an hour for your computer to do it depending on how many images you have how fast your computer is and how big the original images are so pick your trade-off between computing time and uh and final results and then click the play selection button and now that Photoshop action is going to run, it's going to take a few minutes. And when it's done, it's going to prompt you to save. Once it's done, that took seven or eight minutes. Click yes to save it. And ideally, it would open back up in Lightroom. You can see it appears right in Lightroom here. If it doesn't show up in Lightroom, you can go back into Photoshop, do file, open recent, and open the most recent file. And then you can do file, save as, and see exactly where it was stored. So now that that's done, you can go in and uh, actually do some additional editing to it. You might even want to add additional sharpening. My script adds a little bit of sharpening, but you might benefit from having just a little bit more. You could also tweak the noise reduction. So let's take a look at the kind of results that you can expect. Let's zoom in here. This is the wide scene, and this is zoomed in like 600% or something onto one little tiny sign. On the left, you can see one example image taken with a Nikon D3300 and the Sigma 18 to 35 f1.8 lens. And on the right, you can see the results of super res. Uh, words like distributor here become much easier to read. If you look at the kind of white of the sign here, you can see substantial noise in the original image and the final image, all of that is gone. Um, and in general, when you look at the text here, you can see everything's just a little bit sharper and a little bit clearer. You can see my computer just ran out of disk space because processing those files does take a lot of disk space. Um, if you are familiar with image averaging, you can see everything just ends up being a lot clearer with the super res file than it does with the image averaged file. There's a little bit of fogginess on the averaging. Um, compare it again, one picture to super res, just looking at another part of the image, we again see an, basically an elimination of noise and just, you know, a, overall, just a little bit more detail out of it. Here's some bricks here. You can see the bricks are just a little bit sharper. Things like this post here has just a little bit more detail and everything is just cleaner. In the actions, you saw that I had super res 200, 400, and 800% to give you some idea of the difference in clarity that you can get for an exponential increase in processing time. This is an image processed at 200%, whereas this is the image processed at 400%. So to my eye, the 400% is definitely has just a teensy bit more detail. So you're not getting that much more detail out of going from 200% to 400% to 800%, but there is more. And if you don't, it doesn't take your time. You don't have to sit at the computer. You can just start the script and come back in half an hour or an hour, or however long it might take. Another example, going from 200 to 400%, you can see it's just a little bit clearer at 400% and you would see it a little bit clearer at 800% again. 200% over here, 400% over here, everything just ends up a little bit sharper. 
some tips for shooting these consecutive image images. Put your camera into continuous and use single autofocus. Single autofocus tends to be a little bit more precise. If you use back button focus, let go of back button focus after you originally focused so that it's not refocusing. You need these images focused on exactly the same place in the scene. Rattle off your four shots, your 20 shots, whatever it is and check your histogram. Make sure you're getting the very best exposure possible using the lowest ISO possible. You can use these techniques at high ISOs, but you won't see a whole lot more of, of additional detail, uh, at least compared to what you would get out of image averaging. Use the lowest ISO whenever possible. And when you can shoot raw, if you shoot JPEG, that's okay too. It'll work for those techniques too. If you're shooting handheld, be as steady as possible and shoot the pictures, the separate pictures as quickly as possible to minimize the amount of movement and light changes in the scene. Use the lowest ISO possible and leave yourself a little bit of room to crop because the camera will move between scenes and you might have to crop off the edges in post. If you're shooting the sequential images on a tripod, again, use the lowest ISO possible, your camera's base ISO and just tap the camera in between shots. That way the image, the camera will move just a tiny bit. It doesn't even need to move a full pixel. It just needs to move a partial pixel. So if you just tap it, usually that's enough to shake the head and jar whatever loose might be there to make it move sufficiently. You will see the most dramatic improvement when you're using super res for, well, still life. If you're using a low resolution sensor that has no AA filter along with a sharp lens, you can see fairly dramatic improvements. That's why I use the D3300, which has a 24 megapixel sensor, no AA filter, and then a sharp lens, a Sigma 18 to 35. If you're using, uh, say, a Canon camera that has an AA filter and then a kit lens, which isn't very sharp, you probably won't see any improvement at all. You're still going to be limited by the quality of your optics, the quality of the atmosphere, and any movement in the scene. Um, if you're shooting, say, a Canon 5 DSR with a semi-sharp lens, chances are good that the 50 megapixel 5 DSR is already pulling all the detail possible out of the lens and you won't see that much benefit out of it. But even with the 5 DSR and like a sharp lens, like a 24 to 70 f2.8 there, Super Res can give you better results. And if nothing else, it will eliminate any noise that might be in it. Um, and again, because of atmospheric conditions, it helps to be really close to your subject or even indoors. You might run into a few problems. For one, a misalignment because either you moved or Photoshop isn't perfect in their auto align. Just wanted to show you an example here. If you look at the image, you can see that there's a ghost of this little jewel here. And that's because I, I didn't do anything wrong. It's just Photoshop tried to line up the images and it failed. Photoshop's auto align feature isn't always perfect. You can rectify that by aligning by bringing fewer images into Photoshop or um, just kind of uh, manually removing any flawed images that might be part of the stack. If you do the super res and you end up with a picture that is less sharp, go back carefully and look at every image that you're stacking. It could be that one of the images is unsharp and that's contributing to the unsharpness um, because after all, garbage in, garbage out. Uh, if you see ghosting, if something moves from one scene to another, uh, this is pretty easy to rectify. Let's jump back into Lightroom here and let's look at one of the processed images. If we go to where the people are here, this is ghosting. You can see this lady moved over the course of the exposures. The way I can fix that is by control clicking one of the original images and that image, the stacked image. And then I'll select edit in and then open as layers in Photoshop, just as we did before. Let's put your edited file. It'll be a TIFF file and move it to the top layer. And then we're going to select both of these and we're going to do edit and auto align layers. The auto is okay. So it's going to align those for us. And now we can zoom in to any areas that have movement. Let's go back here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the brush tool by select, clicking B. I'm going to set the color to black. And then I'm going to select just the top layer here, add a layer mask. And I'm going to paint black in the layer mask to hide the top layer. So let's get our brush to be a reasonable size here. It's a reasonably soft brush that should 
make the edges a little more natural. And then I'm just going to paint over any flawed parts of the image. Oh, I can see Photoshop did a lousy job of aligning the bottom layer. Okay, I just manually realigned that. You shouldn't have to do that. That's weird that Photoshop failed me in that way. And then you can just kind of repeat this process by painting black in the layer mask to remove any duplicate flaws. Frequently asked questions. No, this does not work with one photo. You can't just make multiple copies of one photo and get more detail out of it. It also generally doesn't work with portraits just because people move so much, even if they don't seem to be moving. I'll also point you to some alternatives, panoramas and image averaging. You can watch these videos to check out those techniques. Uh, both of those tend to work a little uh, panoramas tend to extract even more detail and image averaging is, is a much faster approach. Um, pixel shifting in a camera like the Sony a7R 3 is still better. So if you're interested, it, this is an example of uh, pixel shifting over here on the left and super resolution over on the right, a close-up of the book. And you can see the pixel shift, the sensor shifting technology on the left definitely produces overall crisper images because it's more precise. Uh, and because the camera can do it so precisely, the processing happens much, much faster, or depending on your camera, can actually happen in camera. So you spend less time at the computer. So if you do like these techniques, if you do want to extract more detail out of your existing lenses, you might want to pick up a body that does support pixel shift. Uh, another example, pixel shifted on the left, and sent super res over here on the right. The pixel shift, again, just extracts more and more detail out of it. My favorite pixel shifted cameras are the Sony a7R 3 which is about 3200 bucks, the Pentax K1 about 1800 bucks, and the Olympus EM1 Mark II. The Olympus here actually has the most sophisticated technology. It can stack eight images together. Uh, if you love this stuff, you should definitely learn a little bit about Photoshop, and I have an awesome book for you that includes over 10 hours of video and of course a whole book, lots of practices and sample files that you can work on so you can get good on your post-processing. It'll make a big difference in your photography. Check it out at Amazon, search for Tony Northrup or go to sdp.io slash store. I also have a book on Lightroom that includes lots of video training too at ridiculously cheap prices. And if you don't yet have Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop, head to sdp.io slash Adobe deal where you can get a 30 day free trial. Don't forget to subscribe to see lots of cool photography tutorials and crazy post-processing techniques for nerds like this one. <laughs> Bye, thanks.